Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about inquirer package. Basically, if you're going to build some Node.js CLI, you're going to find this package very useful and handy. If you've been working with, for example, ESLint or TypeScript or other packages, you notice when you're going to initialize them, they're going to ask you a bunch of questions and based on those questions, they're going to give you some feedback and they're going to build your project as well. So this is what we're going to actually build here. So without wasting any time, we're going to install it. So you can just install it with npm install or i inquirer and basically you're going to get a version 9. And with the version 9, because it is native ESM modules, you are going to use import inquirer from inquirer. Or if you want to use, for example, the common JS, the common JS version or like the required version, you need to install version 8. So assuming you're going to use the latest version, whatever version is that, which is as of today, it's version 9 and beyond, then you're going to get the ESM modules. So with the ESM modules, you can see uh, you have to do just a bit of things on your package.json. In a package.json, you need to add type modules. And if you add this one, all good to go. So we have inquirer and then, well, obviously here is a dev dependency. It doesn't matter. It depends on your project. And also you're going to have the type module. Once you have the type module, you can use it in a way that explained in the documentation. So in order to use it, it's very simple. You're going to just import it like this. And then you're going to have a bunch of questions, whatever you want to ask. And then the rest would be as follow. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You can see it now here. So with the inquiry, you're going to prompt questions and then you're going to have the answers. And then we're going to just do, for example, console log one of the items in the answers or all of them. We're going to use console.dir to just look at all of them. But is the console would be an object which contains all the answers. Okay, so now I'm here. And if I want to just show all my questions, I'm going to ask two questions. Basically, one would be a list. The type of the question would be a list so they can choose one of these two JavaScript or TypeScript. And the message would be this one. There is a default one. The other one would be a normal input. So you're going to ask the questions and they're going to answer. Both of them has default. You're going to see it. You're going to see them. And both of them has name. So with the name, this is what exactly you're going to use with your answers. As you can see, we have answers.jsts. This name is this one. So if you want to know what answer they chose for that specific question, or then this is how you're going to get it. But enough talking, let's see it in example. So I'm going to just do node and then simple one. Here, we're going to ask the question, do you prefer JavaScript or TypeScript? It comes from the message. And then we have choices because the type is list. Obviously, we have choices, JavaScript and TypeScript. The reason that TypeScript is already selected is because we have default. And then I'm going to just press enter because that's the default one. And then what do you prefer? Uh, why do you prefer this one? So we can say. So it could be anything. I'm going to press enter. Now you have an object. Your object will have JSTS attributes and reason attributes. There we go. So we have reason and we have JSTS. And also we have default one, which you can see. And if you want to have access to one of them, obviously it's a plain JavaScript. You can just say answer.jsts. I'm going to get rid of this. So to have a better or clear one, we're going to comment out the TypeScript as a default one and the default for the input and run it one more time. So now you can see the default one is JavaScript. I'm going to choose JavaScript. I don't have any answer. Let's say I don't know why I chose JavaScript. You're going to press enter now because we didn't have any default. Then this is going to be something like this. Still the same thing, but you can provide default if you want it. So we have a type list and then also we have type input, normal input. And the rest would be pretty much everywhere the same thing. But let's just build up on this on top of this and talk about the rest. So with the piece example, everything is exactly the same thing. So we have inquiry prompt questions, then we're going to just log out all the answers. And then we have array of questions to just prove the point. So we're going to say node.js, then pizza. 
then we're going to get a little bit different one. So we can choose, for example, a topping. So I'm going to choose, for example, this one and this one and this one with the cheese. We're going to choose both of them. Why not? And then we they don't have olives. That's not good. So we're not going to add pineapple, but we might add extra cheese. I press enter. Now we can see what toppings are we going to get. So everything would be pretty much simple as mm, this. You have interactive CLI that you can really play and do a lot of things. But if now we look at the questions, there we go. The type of the question was checkbox instead of list or input. And the message was choose topping. The name of this answer would be toppings. That's why you get array here. And then there are choices. With the choices, you can see we had separator. Now, if I run it one more time, uh, we have a separator. So that's a separator here. I call it meat. And then we have some number, uh, some options. And then we have another separator, cheese. As you could see, the mozzarella was chosen because the checked was true. So if you scroll, if you are here and scroll down on the left side, you can see mozzarella is chosen. And also we have another one, you, um, the usual one. And also we have extras, extras because this is disabled. So we couldn't choose it. And then the rest would be pretty much the same thing. So, so expand is exactly the same thing. I'm going to just get out of this one and then do node.js.expand. I'll open this one. So basically the question is saying there is a conflict on a file. What do you want to do? I have no idea what do they mean. I assume H is help, but let's say we don't know anything. We're going to press enter. And now it's going to show all the possible answers that we can choose. I'm going to choose R. R doesn't exist. Press enter. It says, please enter, uh, enter a valid command. And now I'm going to choose, for example, D. I want to see the different. And then now we can see the answer was diff. In order to get all of these things, obviously now we have type expand. With the type expand, we have a message and then the name is override. So the override is the name of the answer. And with this type expand, we have a bunch of choices. So you can see this is array. If I just open it now, we have a key, which is Y. And then it's going to choose the value override. Key A, it's going to give us the override all. D is for the diff. And then we have a separator and we have X for a bird. So just run it one more time. You can see if I press enter now, we have these three. We have some messages or the name, but the actual value is different one. And then when we continue, we have a separator. So here and then we have X for a bird. So it depends what I do. I'm going to choose X. Now we're going to get a bird and we can do anything that we want. So now we have recursive one. With the recursive one, you're going to ask the questions continuously. What do I mean is simple. So if I just do note, then recursive, it's going to ask what's my favorite TV show. My favorite TV show, let's say is Friends. Uh, want to enter another TV favorite? Why not? Let's call yes. And then I'm going to call Spartacus. It's going to ask again. And if I just press yes and just say, Big Bang Theory, then again, yes, Vikings, actually here, I'm going to press enter, Vikings. So it's not going to stop until I just press N. Then it's going to give me the list of all of them. Okay, how we achieve this? It's very simple. So we are asking a question, basically, let's, let's see the question. So we have two questions. One is a normal input, so it's going to ask it. And the other one is the confirm. So with the confirm is yes and no. The default was yes, as you could see. And uh, the Y was just a little bit bigger. So if I just press this one, so the default one is yes, because that's why it says just hit enter for yes. And I'm going to just put X and then press N. We're going to get out. So because we had default yes, then it was continuing. Next thing that we can see here, it's a little bit interesting because first thing first, it's going to just prompt the questions. Then the next thing that it's going to do is just add it to the array. So we have an array on the top. 
so all the answers answers TV show which is this bit and then it's going actually to check for the ask again ask again if it is true which is default is true then it's going to call the function one more time the whole function it's run it every time and then once we are done we're just saying these are your favorite one so that's how you're going to achieve the recursive one the next so the next thing that we're going to do we're going to put everything we learn in one project and see what do we get so here with the questions we're going to ask for the email we're going to ask for the password id numbers and quite a few other things but i think before just explaining them let's see the demo i'm going to just say node and then let's run it complex with the complex one is going to ask for the email password is something very strong and then the user id I'm going to just put 200 why not bill number it will be three and then where do you want to log in assuming for example we are building a CLI to log in into a system so we're going to log into development we have username and password obviously on the top uh, everything we have confirmed yes they're all good do you want to log let's say no we don't want to log and then we actually want to uh, deploy logging system and auth system and API I'm gonna press enter spell checker let's just run the spell checker as well why not and any comment we're gonna just press enter and then here I will just start typing so all good and I am happy okay so then press escape colon WQ so we can write and quit we just get out and everything now is here so we have email we have the password we have user id build a number build number target and everything else okay how did we achieve all of these things very simple so the name is just a normal input we're going to just put the email one the password is type password that's why we would see we could see the asterisks or stars because we were masking everything and the type was password the next thing is the input which is the user id obviously here we had default which was thousand so if i just do one more time here that's why you you see the number thousand because there is a default here and also if it is not a number but it's a validate function which is going to validate the answer and if it's not well we show a message otherwise it's true so as long as the validate function doesn't return true we're not going to go to next one and remember something here we are checking the answer answer is is not it's very different from the one which we have at the very bottom that's an object but here this answer belong to these questions so whatever is this question it could be anything it could be for example a and then we can just do something like that but we're going to use answer just for the simplicity but here validate function receive an answer for the current question just remember this one so now if i just put something which is not an integer i'm going to put x y z now we're going to go to the validate it's not an integer we're going to get this result and now if i just remove it to one two three you're going to go to the next one so with the next one actually it's a number so the type is number so i need to press i need to uh, provide number and if i don't provide number i'm going to get none two here is a number but if i say abc we're going to get none because it wasn't a number that's a type and again the next thing is the type list so what do you want to log in uh, where do you want to log in because we have username and password let's just choose local and then have you checked that's the next question you can see here uh, if you have checked the default is true that's why y is bigger so i'm going to press enter and then should i log in again that's another confirm questions so we're going to continue here would you like to do uh would you like uh, what locale do you want to run the spell checker so something very interesting it didn't ask this question it jumped to this one the reason is very simple so here obviously we have the services that we wanted to deploy but we are going to ask these questions only when this condition is true so only when the answer to the target is not a local so because here we chose local so if i just let me actually close these things here 
there you go. So the target answers dot target. So when the answers dot target is not local, then uh, it's going to ask this question. So if the moment I choose local, uh, it's not going to ask it because this is going to return false. So I'm going to stop it one more time and run it again. Here I'm going to choose development, for example. Yes and no. As you can see now, we can choose a service because now this condition is definitely true. The target is not local and it's true and it's going to ask the questions. So I'm going to choose, for example, all of them. Why not? And the next thing is going to be a raw list. Again, choosing one of them. So I'm going to press enter. Let's choose, for example, ENGB and then any comment. So I'm going to press enter, then I for insert. Then I'm going to say all good again. Then we're going to just say escape colon WQ press enter. Now we're going to get all the results. So this is basically how you're going to do it. And all of these things are also available here. Just make sure if you want to know more, you can just have a look at the documentation, but pretty much we cover almost everything. The only thing that I need to mention one more time, if you're going to use any version bigger than eight, then it will be ESM modules and then how you can just import them will be with import. But if you're going to use CommonJS or this version, require version, then you need to use, you need to install version eight. I think here at this stage, we are at the end of the video. And if you like this type of content and you want me to just talk about more NPM packages, interesting packages, please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and let me know in the comment section. And based on the YouTube analytics, I can see most of you are not subscribed. Please, if you don't mind, press the subscribe button, which is going to support the channel. Thank you so much, and I'm gonna see you in the next video.